It's time for Twit episode 279. Jim Lauderback's here. Natalie Del Morris is here. Del Natalie's changed her name. We'll find out why. And Marshall Kirkpatrick from Read Write Web. We're going to talk about WikiLeaks, Google, all the tech news next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for this week in tech is provided by Winamp for Android, the ultimate media player for your desktop and Android device, featuring wireless sync. Download it free at winamp.com slash Android. Video bandwidth for Twit is provided by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 279, recorded December 19th, 2010, sanitized for your protection. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Audible.com. Sign up for the Platinum Plan and get two free books. Go to audible.com slash twit2. And don't forget to follow Audible on Twitter. User ID audible underscore com. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your new account, go to Squarespace.com slash twit and use the offer code TWIT. And by Gazelle, the easy way to sell or recycle the used gadgets lying around your home or office. Don't just sell it, gazelle it. For a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets, go to Gazelle.com and use the offer code TWIT. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, and joining us in the studio to talk about this week's tech news, Mr. Jim Louderback, the CEO of Revision 3. It's great to see you again, Jimmy. It's good to see you, too. Jimmy, my friend. It's nice to be here, too. We were reminiscing before the show. We go way back to 94. I think it's 92 or 92. 93. I think 95. People say, like, I've been working with Leo for 17 years off Jeez and on. Jeez Louise. That's, yeah. that's a long time. You were uh, you ran PC lab, Magazine PC Labs. Week labs. PC Week Labs, yeah. that's right. And um, Ziff Davis hired me, poor wretch that I am, <laughs> to do a show uh, called The Personal Computing Show, which we worked on together with Gina Smith, who is on assignment at CES, but she won't tell anybody where Whoa. or who. So she's back in the game. Cool. Good for Gina. Let's say hello also to Natalie Morris, newly named, newly coined, you may remember her. As Natalie Del Conte. Hey, Natalie. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Del Conte. Yes, yes. that's true. It's so, Morris now. So it's now official. You know, we know you had a baby. What's your baby's name? Yeah. Again? His name's Miles. That's right. Miles. Yeah. And uh, Miles' dad, Clayton Morris of Fox and Friends. And, yes. And you happens to be your husband, or did you just take his name? No, I didn't just take the name. That would be kind of <laughs> presumptuous, I suppose. We did, in fact, get married. Congratulations. So I think since, Thank you. since I saw you last, you got married, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So it's not Del Conte anymore. That's great. But, uh yeah, I still own the Twitter handle, but don't tweet from there anymore. So is your Twitter handle now Natalie Morris? Yeah, that's the great thing about Twitter is you can just change your username whenever you want to and not lose your followers. It was really great of them to, to have the foresight to design that into their system, I think. I wonder if it was foresight so. or just, <laughs> yeah, whoops, we forgot to, <laughs> we forgot that part. Well, Maybe, anyway. I think we could give them the credit. So if you want to change your name anytime soon, you're, you're free to keep your followers. I have changed the capitalization. That's all I've ever changed. I changed ah. the inner cap on my name. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. How long, when did you do that? Uh, I, I go back and forth. <laughs> you know what's bad, though, is you lose your, you know, the little check mark, your verified check mark if you do stuff like that. So you don't want to do that too much. Then they come back later and they do it. Natalie works for uh, CBS, of course, and uh, she, you, you used, do you still do Buzz Out Loud once in a while? Um, sometimes, not, not quite You're as in often. New York I do the now. 404 um, a lot more than I do Buzz Out Loud. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and so, but my, my daily show is, is loaded, which you can find at cnet.com slash loaded. Loaded! She's loaded. Also here with us, it's great to have him. I'm going to work very hard to pronounce his name. Well, I know his name, Marshall Kirkpatrick. Well, see, now I screwed that up. <laughs> Marshall Kirkpatrick. Hey, that, Leo. But Thanks the for... company he works for is ReadWriteWeb.com. Hey, I got it. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks Feel for Feel free to wear us. it out. <laughs> Weed White Web. 
Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> a great site, actually, if you are following what's going on on the Internet. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. And Marshall does the news portion of Read, Write, Web. It's true. I'm, I'm, uh, I've got the same Twitter name I always have. I just checked, and at Mr. Neckbeard is already taken, so I won't, be, <laughs> I won't be switching that and keeping my followers. So what do we think the big story, I, you know, I'm not even going to presume, what do we think the big story of the week was this week? I know what a big story for me was. Yahoo saying we're going to get rid of delicious. <laughs> Actually, Yahoo didn't say it. They uh, had it on a slide at a uh, Yahoo All Hands meeting, a slide that leaked out of Yahoo. Uh, and then Yahoo, the people at Delicious said, no, 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 we're not going to kill it. We just want to sell it to somebody who won't kill it. It's just pining for the fjords. It's, it's not dead yet. <laughs> it's not dead yet. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, I actually uh, probably use Delicious more than most. I don't think bookmark services are particularly vital. I use it a lot. Do you? I do too. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe it's those Me of us too. who cover tech stories use it. Yeah, I, I love it for recipes um, and travel. When I want to remember hotels or, or things like that abroad, I, I'll bookmark on Delicious. And I feel like it just hasn't gone that far because it's still too hard to do. It really relied on the plug-in ecosystem, which most people don't do. And um, I think Yahoo could have made that really consumer-friendly. For some reason, they just didn't it's just like one of those things where you know a company buys another company that's cool and does absolutely zero with it it's frustrating they never improved it they just let it the only thing they did as far as i could tell is change del.icio.us to delicious.com which in and, and of itself they, was valuable but i mean a lot easier to remember than delicious well the, the trouble and they added universal login from yahoo right which, big, which broke yeah. which broke a lot of third-party yeah, <laughs> logins yeah <laughs> they started using a lot well the trouble with all of it is that that Yahoo never really figured out who they were, and they bought all these companies. Do you think that they're? Re this is really the beginning of the end. They laid off what four percent of their workforce, which isn't that many. But you know what I thought was interesting is that four percent of their workforce was what about four hundred people? Yeah, I had no idea that they had that few people working there. Yeah, it's not that you many. You think of it? Yahoo, and you think four percent of the workforce. That's got to be thousands. How of how people. many uh, Google's got what forty or fifty thousand employees? How many? I mean, Yahoo is not that big. Yeah, they got to be down to like what? They have a lot of properties, and many of these properties, like um, uh, our, our Buzz, Yahoo Buzz, which I thought was was a huge success. In fact, I remember very well yeah. that one of the one of the things people would say is, "Well, you think Dig is big? You should see how big Buzz is." I mean, many, many more users, but mostly because of, you know, my Yahoo, you know, the homepage and so forth. But you know, that's going to be that phased way. out. Um, what is, what, and, and yeah. it's, it really feels like Yahoo's just, it's shut off the lights and, and go to bed. Is that your take on it, Marshall? Oh, I, I don't know that, that that's the case. I mean, my personal interest in it wanes every time a, a more developer-focused, you know, really innovative little startup project gets shut down. Yeah. But it is, it remains one of the most popular domains on the web. It's big in email. Uh, yeah, I, I think that they're going to be doing okay. Although we used to say the same thing about MySpace, I, you know, not so long ago, they still have a lot of traffic. Um, but I, I expect it to be a, a slow demise if it turns out to be a demise. And maybe they'll just turn out to be the media media and advertising company that, that they've wanted to be for some time. So my blog log, going to be phased out. Yahoo bookmarks, Yahoo picks, merged instead of phased out. Upcoming, which I really liked as a uh, invite site. I use Upcoming all the time. Fire Eagle, which was their location aggregation uh, site. Then they said, well, we're not going to kill Delicious. We're going uh, to sell it. And by the way, Kevin Rose just tweeted that he wants to buy it. I think he'd be a good person to buy it. He's friends with Joshua. Yeah, he probably would, could bring well, Joshua Schachter back yeah, he in. He could definitely bring him back. The guy who started it. Or tried to. Yeah. You know, the, the problem with Yahoo overall, though, Leo, and um, <laughs> back in 2005, they offered me a job to come in and start Yahoo Tech. Didn't oh, really? Didn't want to do it. But, yeah. But one of the things that I found, so I was talking would to Would it be of, as a video thing, you mean? Or? No, no, just Yahoo Tech. This is when I was at Like PC Yahoo Mag. Finance. Yeah, so Yahoo Tech. But this I is when we were both at PC this Mag. This is when we were both at PC Mag. Because the Jim guy, was my boss. I think people don't know that. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Jim used to be my boss. Yep. When I was a writer at PC Mag. He used to be my boss too. Did he used to be your boss, Marshall? <laughs> Marshall uh, never yet. had the no, that has, <laughs> never, never, had that never had to suffer the pain of working for me. Um, <laughs> but you, so you know what I found out? I talked to one of the HR guys and I said, "Okay, how do you know how are people successful at Yahoo?" And he said, 
Uh, oh, the people who are really successful at Yahoo are not the ones who are really good at getting things done, oh. but they're the ones who are really good at negotiating with other people to do things for them. Yeah. Very like Tom Sawyer painting the fence. Yeah. And that's turned me off 100%. I said, and it's obvious. They bring these great things in from outside. And instead of giving these great things the ability to go out and do great things, they put them in this, in this bureaucracy where they've got to work the system to get anything done. And that's why Delicious hasn't changed for, what, 10 years or however long it's been there. Right. Count them all down. But it's like, do they have no original ideas of their own? You know, Google went and bought YouTube, and then they went and bought Jump Cut. And then, you know, Google is buying all these companies, and they're like, oh, well, let's try Flickr then. And um, But again, they just don't do anything with it. You'd like to think that a company this big has got some kind of larger vision, or at least AOL, which is completely changing their vision now to become a content producer, which I think is compelling. You know, well, the, one of those... Go ahead, go ahead, Marshall. Yahoo's live video offering was really cool for the six weeks that <laughs> that they let it live before killing it, and yeah. uh, and some of the stuff, some of the geolocation stuff, Yahoo Pipes, uh, Yahoo Query Language, uh, things like that are are really, and uh, the the interface libraries, uh, some of the developer focused stuff that they're doing at Yahoo is real original and very widely appreciated, uh, if not a big driver of revenues. I, you know, one of the things people said uh, anonymously about Yahoo is that it was a very meeting-driven culture, that you, you really didn't spend much time on your product. You spent most of your time in meetings defending your product. Yeah, and trying to get other people to do it. Like, if you wanted a design done for your product, you couldn't have a designer on staff. You had to go to the central design yeah. group and get on somebody's schedule to get them to give you the time to... And the same thing went with everything. Something Google... I, Google, now, but Google seems to be starting to suffer the same kind of... Uh, arterial sclerosis that happens to these big companies but in order to avoid that they do have at least these kind of units that work autonomously and in the I think the idea is to keep a startup mentality in these groups um, and which is why you see, and there's a problem with that too because you see Google products launch kind of like last week four <laughs> products launch all at the same time because there's no coordination they're all kind of on their own and when they're done they launch um, it's difficult you look at Microsoft I think that's Part of the problem at Microsoft was there were a lot of individual fiefdoms, all of which competing with one another, and uh, it was got pretty vicious in there. So it's very difficult to get, in tech at least, a company to grow, become big, and keep that nimbleness, that spirit of entrepreneurship. It's hard to do. But I will say that at least the PR people at Google know what's launching, when it's going to launch. So someone is keeping Somebody track of knows. everything. Whereas at Yahoo, if you wanted to say, hey, when are you going to do this or when are you going to do that? You, they had like four different PR agencies working for them. You, they never knew who represented, you know, say Flickr versus who represented Yahoo Maps. You could never find someone that you wanted to talk to. So it was sort of... That's interesting. Can, yeah. It showed that no one knew what the whole company was doing. It was the right foot never or what's the saying? Right hand never knew what the left hand was doing. Let alone the feet. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's true. Google, they do know what's going on, but they don't have any control of it. So last week they announced what? They announced Google Books, the CR48, the Nexus S, um, and, uh, I mean, all at the same time, which you would normally, if you were Apple, see, maybe Apple's an example of a company that has very tight control of this. And Although think about the way Apple built the Mac, right? Steve Jobs took the guys who built the original to. Mac yeah. and put them in a separate building right. off campus. Put up a pirate secret. flag, yep. said, we're not part of the company. And it worked. It did work. It did work. Um, Apple succeeds uh, of, at avoiding this because it's just one guy. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody works for one guy, and he says what goes. And, boy, you don't launch a product unless Steve Jobs says it goes, right? Well, he also has the product vision to enable and he does successful things to launch. He does have that vision. I mean, it, uh, you know, you can say whatever you want about Carl Bartz. She was, pro she was really good at Autodesk, but she doesn't seem to have the product vision for what they need at Yahoo. I love this. And, Marshall, you wrote about this uh, in Read, Write, Web. Yahoo uh, blamed the press <laughs> 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 for the whole delicious debacle. You know, you shouldn't have published that story. It's your fault. Yeah. And now that, Delicious is dead. Yeah. That, that was... Uh... That was unfortunate for sure. Yeah. If it weren't uh, for the we'll, media, we'd... <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Hopefully the tools will, will remain available and people will keep using them. But I'm sure, you know, every every one of those missteps led more people away from from contributing content to, to Delicious. You point out, and I think this is a good model, that when that Google gave the wave code to 
the Apache, the Apache Foundation. They open sourced it. Maybe that's what you do with Delicious. You think Possibly, it though there was a, there's an article that just hit TechMeme a few minutes ago from a former Delicious engineer uh, who said that that really wasn't viable because there was uh, enough proprietary uh. Yahoo code in there uh, that that's, that's going to be a lot easier said than done. And, and one of the other things that we have pointed out and that other people have pointed out is the fact that uh, apparently Yahoo has fired most of the people who knew how to run the machines there. <laughs> And so what are they selling? You know, that's, that's going to be a tough thing to sell, too. And it's such a, it's such a crying shame. You know, Gabe Rivera from TechMeme called Delicious an uber-seminal app for all of Web 2.0. And, uh, and I, it, it wasn't just a bookmarking service. It was a, a really potent tool and a symbol. And one of the coolest things that came out in that early era of Web 2.0 and it's, it's just tragic to see what's happened to it. I'm using a well, Pinboard now. In fact, we're going to interview the guy who created Pinboard on Net at Night on Tuesday. Um, and he uses the Delicious API. So there is, you know, there is a Delicious API that's public. And uh, as a result, Pinboard, which is very simple, very clean, very, you know, kind of fundamental and basic, to me feels like Delicious would have been had they allowed it to improve and get better and so forth. Um, well, Leo... Are you able to in Pinboard see the see other people's bookmarks and see you know the most popular URLs yes. categorized with certain keywords? Yes, uh, as you can in Delicious. Yes, there's public and private po uh, posts. Uh, if you go to the Pinboard.in, it's Pinboard.in. Go to the front page. They have popular. Now the popular is not as good as Delicious because there's not as many people using it. The other thing they did, which I thought was kind of interesting, I think it's just one guy, is he charges. It's not free, but he charges point zero zero one cents per user. So if, if your user ten thousand, you pay a buck or whatever it is, and the and the more users, the more you pay. So it's there's I paid seven dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so there's more there's incentive to get in early. Uh, it does import from a delicious, yeah, but there's some features that I liked in delicious. You know, I loved it that with delicious you could use four colon and tag something and put it in somebody's inbox. I don't see that inbox feature. Uh, here, there's also Digo, D I I G O, which is a, uh, actually has a lot more features. It seems like a lot more elaborate. I don't know. If I use Evernote, um, and really I for actually, your bookmarking. Mm -hmm. And I used to use Furl, if you remember that. that oh, was I love Furl. I love Furl. Furl was much better. And when they sh shut that down, then I migrated over to Delicious. And now when I have to go yeah. to Evernote, I feel like I'm being chased all over the web. And I feel like it's because no one will do this in a way that's simple enough for the general consumer to get on board with. It's I think still that's sort part of the geeky problem. thing to do. I think that's part of the problem is that nobody even understands why you would do it. There's no Nobody's been able to make this kind of a clear... You disagree, Marshall? I do, yeah. I, I think back to conversations I've had with a lot of non-technical family members where uh, I told them you can bookmark things on the Internet so that you can access your bookmarks from any computer, and their eyes light up. And, yeah. you know, that simplest value proposition I think is compelling, and it's just a matter of, of letting people know that it's out there and then making it a, a friendly enough place to, to be once they first arrive. Well, here, here's yeah, a, I have a friend who planned her whole wedding by bookmarking on her computer. I was like, what if your computer crashes? You won't know where to get to wow. your dress, your cake, like all of that stuff. And she's like, no, it's fine. It'll be fine. Computers Which, never crash. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe what we're saying here, and you brought it up with Pinboard, is you have to pay for Pinboard. Maybe what we're seeing I don't here, mind that. But, but exactly. Maybe we're seeing the end of the free web. Yeah, that might I mean, be. This is a great service. We all love it. I've never paid a dime for Delicious. Natalie, did you ever pay a dime for Delicious? No. And there was really Actually, no way for I... Delicious to make right, money. How do you monetize yeah, Delicious? Yeah, exactly. There's no ads. If, you, if it's a good enough service, you should pay for it. That's and what maybe what Kevin is doing is right. He likes it enough that he wants to buy the company. It's like Victor Kayam buying, you know, the Razor, the Remington. Kevin, right? Kevin has always been, you know, he's friends with Joshua Schachter who wrote Delicious. He's always been kind of a fan. Dig, in some ways, has some similar... It, it actually is, I think, kind of, kind of, kind of yeah. complimentary to Dig. So maybe that's the way to do it. I don't know. Well, Delicious has, at times at least, influenced Yahoo's search results. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And and so there there was some monetization going on there. It was definitely providing value to well, the that's company. That's interesting. Okay, but obviously not enough value. Yep, they let everyone go. Well, when you start bleeding, is Yahoo bleeding? Well, they're not doing search anymore either. 
Right. Yahoo, you know what? To make another Monty Python reference, Yahoo reminds me of the knight with his arms and his legs cut off saying, I'll bite your head off. Come back here. <laughs> so really, is I mean, it's hard to imagine Yahoo not being around. But they obviously made a huge mistake when they turned down a $31 billion, Total. or whatever it was, bid. What was it? Was it 31 Some huge amount it was a huge Microsoft. amount from Microsoft. Yeah. And they said, that's no, that's not enough. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> You got to be thinking. Well, and, and then taking that, uh, yeah. you know, look at them merging with AOL, which is not going to happen, right? That was the next step. That was right? the next they thing. Were gonna, AOL the rumors were there that yeah. they were dancing together, but yeah. it's hard to dance with somebody with no arms and no legs. Well, and AOL's not exactly <laughs> hopping around either. <laughs> yeah, at least they have a couple they have of a limbs plan. left. They have a plan. I'm not no, but they're putting a lot of money, like I said, into content, into various channels. Like this is the fashion yeah. channel, and this is, you know, and I'm I really like Lindsay Campbell's new new show, The Daily, or something like that. Like I've I've been actually going back to AOL to read and watch some of the stuff because I think they're doing a good job at that. So it's yeah, a but, new identity. But how's that working out for them when it, you look at the revenue side? And yeah, they're in the middle of a turnaround, but they haven't been able to move the needle with all the content, whether it's on seed or local or anything else, it still hasn't caused them, because their revenue is still declining. That's a problem. We are talking with Natalie Del Morris. <laughs> I it. do that all the time. I'll get it one of these days. <laughs> Natalie Morris, uh, Marshall Kirkpatrick, and uh, Jim Louderback. You're watching uh, Twit coming up. Are your, are your smartphone apps spying on you? Apparently they are. But before we uh, do that, I would like to mention our friends at squarespace.com. Natalie's site is on Squarespace. It is. You like it? I do. You can I tell do the like truth. Squares. Yeah. I have a few actually. I have a mommy blog as well on Squarespace. What's that? Mommy, mommybeta.com. Oh, neat. Yeah. So why did you choose Squarespace besides the fact they probably gave you a free site? No, they didn't actually. Um, and they, they noticed that I was using it and they're like, hey, we would have just, you know, paid for this. But I, I didn't want any kind no, of. No, I think it's appropriate. Yeah. Um, and because, you know, I, I blog with four other, three other girlfriends there. There's four of us who just became moms this year and all sort of chronicled our lives together on mommybeta.com. And I wanted it to be easy for them because um, I felt like some of the other blogging solutions out there were a little too, um, you know, they're not tech reporters. They're, right. they're PR, really smart girls. But um, I just wanted something that was easy. What a great and picture. That, that's Alex's uh, picture when she was pregnant. That's fantastic. I love that. Isn't that cute? Yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, I, Clayton thought that was me at first, and he's like, "Who's that guy? Why am I taking pictures? <laughs> <laughs> Why is he holding your stomach? And where is his shirt?" <laughs> so here's the neat thing about I. One of the things I really like about Squarespace is you you can't look at this site and say it's a Squarespace blog. It's it's a website, and it's unique, and it look you know the design is unique, and that's the thing I like about so much about Squarespace. Squarespace, you start with go. In fact, go if you go right now, Squarespace.com. Uh, slash twit and you can take a look at uh, a whole bunch of uh, information about how it works and what the templates are and so forth squarespace.com slash twit the thing about squarespace is it's hosting yes but it's also uh, software uh, and so the software is always up to date security is always patched some very big businesses use squarespace keels one of my favorite places uh, I, lo I love keels we're easterners so we know about keels jim my wife loves keels yeah keels is fantastic <laughs> they use squarespace and their site looks unique they all look unique you start with uh the, the it all starts with the same uh, uh i think about 50 or 60 designer templates but then the customization is infinite you can do anything you want with with Ajax, with drag and drop. If you know CSS, of course, you can use it in JavaScript, but you don't have to. You don't have to be a designer to create an incredibly professional-looking, unique site. If you look at the examples, you'll see how many great Squarespace sites there are out there. Then, of course, it's easy to post with that iPhone app. You can not only post, but you can moderate comments, kill spam, that kind of thing. Great stats so you know exactly who's visiting. They've got photo galleries. A lot of photographers use Squarespace for, for their portfolios. Form building, data collection, intuitive editing, and very simple connections to the social sites we all use. You can totally integrate it. I want you to try it right now absolutely free. Just go to squarespace.com slash twit. Click that great big green button that says try it for free. You don't need a credit card. You just give it a name, a password, an email address. Enter those letters. Alex Lindsay went to a, was at a restaurant. He loved. He said, where's your website? They said, we don't have a website. He said, well, you do now. He literally, half an hour later, <laughs> made his Squarespace site for free and said, look, if you guys want to keep it, here's a password. 
I mean, great. that's that's the kind of thing you can do with Squarespace. And, it, and I'm sure, knowing Alex, it was a fantastic site. I hope they, I hope they took him up on it. After two weeks, if you decide you want to keep the site, uh, pricing is very affordable. And if you use the offer code TWIT, you'll save 10% off all of these prices. So if you're somebody like Natalie, where you have other authors, they have uh, multiple author sites. What is this, do you know what this audience's thing is, uh, Natalie? Because I don't really, you have, you have different looks depending on the audience. Yeah, it's kind of a weird, I, I haven't, that actually is not, I haven't found the easiest thing to figure out. Because you, you, you create a password protected area of your website. So you, different members can have different parts of the site. I guess if you wanted a pay site, yeah. this would be great. Exactly. Yeah. And then different people have different uh, editors. Permissions. Right. Right. Yeah, different editors. It's really neat. Starts at $12, but again, use the offer code TWIT and you'll save 10%. Not for the first month, the first year, but for the life of your site. Squarespace.com slash TWIT. It's really the easy way to create a great website. So uh, not just uh, iPhones, not just Android phones, but apparently smartphone apps in general now are really paying attention to uh, what you're doing. The Wall Street Journal did an investigation and found out that Apps like Paper Toss and Text Plus are actually passing information about us to the advertiser. The journal tested 101 apps from Apple and Android to see which apps were reporting personal data to advertisers. Over half sent the iPhone's unique identification number to companies without user consent. Just under half sent data on the phone's location. 5% of the apps reported age and gender information to the advertisers. Do you, is this something you agree to when you uh, download these apps, when you sign the agreement? Or is this, is this something we should expect? Is it par for the course, Marshall? Is this a bad thing or a good thing? Uh, have I lost your audio? I think I've lost your audio, Marshall. Did you mute yourself? Uh, yes, I did. Ah, Sorry about that. Go ahead. So this Wall Street Journal series about online privacy has been driving me crazy for months. Uh, Some it's of it's completely BS. Right? And, and the parts of it that aren't uh, are really couched in fear-mongering okay. and, and anti-innovation language. You know, the, the federal well, government has picked up the, the gauntlet a little bit here and is talking about things like a do not track right. uh, requirement and a privacy policy roundtable and what have you. And when the federal government talks about these issues, they almost without fail are also mentioning the incredible potential for innovation that user activity data provides. They never leave that out uh, in all the documents I've read and most media coverage, and especially this Wall Street Journal stuff, it never talks about the, the upside. It's all boogeyman, you know, fear-based advertising, well, and let's not forget, uh, Rupert Murdoch owns the Wall Street Journal and has a little bit of an investment in the Internet failing. I think you're going to lose that one, Rupert. On the other hand, I do think that of all the articles I've read, this one seems to have a pretty good point. You, do we agree that Paper Toss should send my personal information to an advertiser? Is that, is that something that everybody understands is going to happen? Oh, people don't understand it uh, for sure, but, uh, but the kind of backlash that could come as a result of it, I'm real concerned about too. You know, my, my friend and mentor, Marjolyn Hoekstra over in Amsterdam just sent me a, a link to an app called Firewall IP that you can use if you've got a jailbroken iPhone and it will show you all of those outgoing requests uh, that you may not be aware of and allow you to approve or deny them uh, one at a time. The, uh, the journal points out that most of these sites uh, do not have a privacy policy, and neither Apple nor Google requires a privacy policy on the part of apps. Um, so I guess is let the buyer beware. Well, you know, in a lot of these apps, when, when they install, and I've seen this on a couple of different f types of phones, they do say, you know, this app is asking for this, right. this, and this. Android, okay de def you? Android definitely tells yeah, you that. Yeah. yeah, as does the RIM, uh, Blackberries, and I've been playing around with a Nokia device and I seem to do the same thing. But you still don't Who really know that? what you're giving up. And it's not granular. I mean, it's not, yeah. it's just saying this site, you know, this app uses your, you know, internet connection. But it doesn't say, it uses it to transmit everything you're doing back to the home office. Well, and I think they are, the, these apps are taking too much of an advantage of the personal information. Because your phone has 
the most personal information on you of anything, right? It knows where you are. It knows what you do. It knows who you call. And giving that out without your explicit authorization, I think, is wrong. And I think that we're going to see a backlash. Right. We're seeing it already. Look at the don't, you know, do not follow stuff on the Internet right. that the FTC is doing. Angry Birds on the iPhone sends your unique identifier, which, by the way, cannot be modified. Sends your unique identifier. Maybe that, okay, maybe that's okay. And your location. Now, why does Angry Birds, why does Chillingo need my location? And what do they do with it? They say, we don't do anything with it. But then why do you say, well, why, why do, do you, you take it? Why do you take it? Well, on the, so the the less admirable side of the coin there would be to geotarget uh, advertisements. Right. I suppose. Uh, on the other side of the coin, perhaps more favorably, uh, they could use that sort of, uh, that sort of information to, team you up with other players of the game in your area. Now, the but I, okay. Is, you but know, the sky's the limit, and, and it's up to some of these people who are getting this data, too, to do something with it that's interesting. Well, I, but, I, but I got to point out that Angry stuff. Birds on the iPhone it has no ads. It's a paid application. So Nokia, too. I got it right here. Yeah, Look. and it doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't have team play. It doesn't, it doesn't have any of that. Geographic it's stuff. Got birds and pigs. It's it. So I, I, I still don't understand. <laughs> birds and pigs. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to know where phone, I am. What phone is that? This is the N8. Maybe they Nokia. think you need caffeine as you're look at that. furiously yeah. playing Angry yeah. Birds. Hey, there's a Starbucks. So this is well, the this is the phone all over Europe. When I was in Paris for Le Web, they're the heavy, heavy promotion from the Nokia N8. This is their hot new smartphone. Symbian, right? Hold it in your hand. I want you to feel, feel well, first how of all, hot it's it hot. is. That's what I mean. I mean, it's really hot. It's they, heated up. They're a little bit of an issue with battery uh, because it's been sitting in, in basically my pocket for two hours, and it's been really warming up and draining it's, the battery. It's so. a little bit, it's an underwhelming form factor. It's a little bit um, thick. It's got a 12 megapixel camera on the Oh, that's video. why. And they've always, and Carl's Ice Glass, they've yeah. always done a good job well, on the cameras. The, the other thing about that is it is um, Gorilla Glass on the front, and I really like that because I always scratch my phones. Right. This one, Gorilla Glass, you can be, almost drive a nail into it and not scratch it. It's got a front, looks like it's got a front-facing camera and a flash on the front. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of kooky. Um, I don't know, what do you think? You think it's a good phone? Um, I, it's too early. I'm going to give up your. For a couple days. See, I can't give up my iPhone. I'll give up my BlackBerry for it. So, I have the uh, Nexus S here, which I, uh, I like the plain Google experience. I think it's just fantastic. It does not have Gorilla Glass though, which I was surprised by. It doesn't have that no scratch glass. Right. I think the Nexus One actually had Gorilla. Did it really? Glass. That's interesting. It did. I'm not and sure. the iPhone does too, right? It has like mm -hmm. a sapphire or some sort of. Although yeah. my son immediately, both my son and daughter have iPhones. That are completely shards. Yeah, the, 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 the Corning makes this Gorilla Glass, and it is really, I think, it's a real breakthrough for clear glass. Right. At, at CES, you should go by Corning and check out Gorilla Glass, because they're going to be there. They're going to be showing off Gorilla Glass. Okay. And talk to them about what it does. I, you know, we, uh, Burke McQuinn, who's in our uh, studio department um, at uh, Mobile, was it Mobile Expo? Mobile Focus. Mm -hmm. The Gorilla Glass where people were there, and uh, he stomped on it with his motorcycle boot and smashed it. He did, really? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, but, it. that's but a usual course. use case. Yeah, yeah nobody's going to stomp that. on their phone. Wait, was he trying to prove that it couldn't be broken, and then he broke it? Uh, Yeah. Oh. And he was really <laughs> embarrassed. He thought he thought I would, like, be <laughs> mad at him. I remember that. I, remember I was that. actually happy for him. I thought, good job. Well done, Burke. It's the Titanic of phones. Yeah. Apple doesn't do Gorilla Glass exactly, but it does apparently have a hard, hardened glass. Although, and the Galaxy S, I'm told the Galaxy S does have Gorilla Glass, so maybe this does. Really? Yeah. I, I looked it up. I don't think it does. It doesn't? Okay. Yeah. Corning, we'll have to ask Corning. Yeah. New Google Maps on here. If you looked at the new uh, Maps 5, if you have an Android phone, uh, not yet on iPhone. But that the, is so cool. Isn't that kind of neat? They use vector. The offline function, yeah, yeah is the what I'm the most excited stuff. about. Yeah. Because you don't have to be connected. You can just download the maps for where you are. Which is another thing to try at CES because we all know that there's the bandwidth there is terrible. You do have to be connected to get your initial right. directions, right. but then if you lose connection, then your maps will continue because that's happened to me so many times where I'll get lost and like, where's the turn? I don't know, and um, because you've lost your connection, it's great. So when you, uh, so I guess I must have cached the maps, and these are instead of bitmaps, which the used to be, it's now vector based. So when you zoom in, it's instant, and you don't, you know, it just redraws so it. Cool. Which is really great. You don't have to wait for it. Uh, Nokia's maps use the same technology. Yeah, They're also vector-based. Let's be honest. Uh, yeah, the Oki map on here, I downloaded California and Vermont. It's cool. I have those maps on here. It's kind of, I mean, it's not a, it's kind of a silly 
feature. Let me, let me. I mean, come on. Of course you could do that. And then, then this is nice. You now can use the pinch to twist the map. And if you use two fingers, it'll change the angle kind of a la uh, Google Earth. And if you're in an area where they've modeled the buildings, obviously, and here in Petaluma, we haven't done SketchUp to model the buildings. But if you go to New York City, the buildings will actually kind of almost looks like pop out of the phone as you tilt as you tilt that way and that's kind of fun it's, but it's fun, a gimmick but, but Come okay, on. how useful is that? the most useful thing is offline maps right that's the thing that we should get excited about well, yeah and, also the, and the, the thing about vector maps is they don't have to every time you pinch exactly. or zoom it has to reload a new right, map exactly. if it's not using that technology but right. now that map is cached and so you can move it around and you don't have to wait for a brand new connection to the server well, yeah you saw exactly. how snappy it was exactly. I mean, it's pretty cool yeah uh this is gingerbread uh, which is 2.3, and big improvements in the uh, performance, I have to say, on the Android uh, phone. I think that's something that Apple people often uh, say, uh, use as a negative on the Android phones, is the, uh, is the kind of the slightest lag when you move stuff around. And I think that that's been, that's been kind of handled. We we have a, the uh, the S. We've got a review up on App Judgment at Revision. Do you like 3 it? on that? Yeah, and I played with it a little bit. A couple guys at the office waited in line at Best Buy on Friday to pick one up. Yeah, with that's six impressive. other people. That's <laughs> impressive. I like it. I've, I've been very happy with it. You know, there's some missing features. You can't add an SD card. It doesn't have a light, a notification light. Apparently, Samsung doesn't like those. Uh, these aren't physical buttons. They're you know, kind of electronic buttons, but I don't mind that. I kind of I don't like the physical buttons. The new keyboard is much better on the on the uh, on the Nexus S. Do you think it's interesting that uh, Google went from HTC as the maker of the Nexus One to Samsung, Samsung? as the Nexus yeah, S? I do think it's. I wonder interesting. what that means. Yeah. Maybe nothing, but I always like looking for conspiracies. Yeah. I like. I have to say, I'm, I like the uh, Galaxy S line in general, and I love the AMOLED screens. Don't you love the AMOLED oh, screens? Yeah. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Maybe they, they just want everyone to have a year, have a turn. It's like prom queen. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Samsung is the prom queen this year. LG's <laughs> next, next year. It'll be it'll be Motorola. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's pretty clear uh, that um, this isn't a phone that Google wants to make money on or even sell. They just have to have something that's a reference. Platform. You know what's cool about that phone, and I don't know if you can show it, but turn it on its side. It's got this convexity to it or concavity to it. It's yeah. Kind of a, it's kind of a, it's kind of slopey. It's kind of weird. I don't know if you can really <laughs> tell. And it's apparently just the glass. I fix it, tore it down, and said, no, you know what? The panel underneath, the, the LCD is flat. But there's a slightest. Why do you think they do that? Is that for glare? I have no idea. I just think it's cool. Yeah. It's like going up to 11. It's like our glass curve. It's cute. No, it Yours said something curve. in the press release about that, how it's just so much more comfortable. Oh, well, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. it now fits the contours of my cheek. Right. It's not curved enough Unless, of to course, you're a square-jawed. Well, that's the thing. I have very round cheeks. They really, so. they'd have to make this into like a bowling ball. To, <laughs> I must be, I don't know. That's, it's so much more comfortable. You know, you really shouldn't be holding that up to your head anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else is new in the world of technology? Uh, big lunar eclipse coming up on Monday. Oh, boy. Oh, you stole my yeah. beating heart. Oh, how exciting. Um, <laughs> how is lunar eclipse part of technology, Leo? It, this is like the most natural event you can get. Anything that uh, geeks would be interested in. Ah, okay. Huh? We're going to webcast We're going to webcast the lunar eclipse. Look, the moon. It's disappearing. Leo Laporte will interview the man on the moon oh, on the I next Oh, I know what the big quiz. story is. Did we'll we talk about this last week? It. Mark Zuckerberg, man of the year. Wait, is there some, that's some old paper magazine that's going out of business? <laughs> is that right? I can't remember. Man of the year, Mark Zuckerberg, with the creepiest picture you've ever seen on the front page at Time. Time I know. Magazine. It looks like we shouldn't call him man, like boy of the year. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Poor Mark. Man. Child genius. I don't of know. The year. Did he just get dissed big time? There are pictures of him as a, no, I'm, I'm, as you, a I'm baby. Just yeah. He's the he's man. He's very young. He's very young, and he's the richest billionaire. Uh, uh, the youngest billionaire? The richest, youngest billionaire? I don't know. Well, but the market for his shares certainly indicate that he's a billionaire. But does he have a billion dollars in the bank, or does he have shares in, oh, in yeah. a. Non-liquid. Did you? He's stock. he's selling his, uh, he's selling his, uh, or, or actually, I guess, leasing the house that he's been living in, and it's very modest. It's nothing fancy. Yeah. It's not a mansion. Of course, he's moving somewhere, which is probably quite a mansion. So I don't know. Let me let me show you just for those of you watching the video at home. Let me see if I could find the uh, the cover. 
picture. Would you find it a little weird to live in Mark Zuckerberg's house, given that you know people are probably track him down, and there's probably going to be stalkers coming over who don't know he's moved. Hey, he's Mark you're here. looking in the window, you know, here. and you're brushing your teeth. It's like that's Mark, not Mark Zuckerberg. Mark here. Don't you think that's kind of creepy? That cover. It's like he's stop look- poking. It's he like doesn't live here anymore. Yeah, really. <laughs> right. It's like he's staring at you. Stop poking. Don't, don't you think he's kind of staring? And like, it, don't his eyes follow you as you move? Look, move around. His eyes follow you. It's kind of like the uh, Haunted Mansion, Disney. <laughs> and yeah, why no does this windows. picture exist? He he posed for it? Yeah. In some capacity? I think it's HDR. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, now laugh if you will, but that, <laughs> that young guy right there, any other year, if it weren't for WikiLeaks, uh, I think that, that people wouldn't object to Zuckerberg's getting Person of the Year award. I mean, he, he brought... Easy publishing and personalized subscription syndication reading. You know the the uh, the power of RSS in the form of the news feed to 500 people, right. 500 billion people, million people all around the world. He's okay. totally changed the world. No, you you know what? I I actually agree with you. In fact, uh, I argued this point uh, on this week in Google. He 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 certainly was a, is a strong candidate for the person of the year. And Facebook is an amazing story. Really, let's face it. Well, absolutely, technology person of the year. Um, but it must have been a pretty low beat year if he's our <laughs> overall worldwide person of the half a billion users. And you're right, Marshall. He made it easy to publish. He's, they do more pictures, serve more pictures than Flickr and uh, everyone else combined. I mean, this is a significant. Should Julian oh, yeah. Assange be the person of the year? Well, yes. okay. It- he, it's a significant win for introverts everywhere. Um, <laughs> I'm Clayton watching, off camera I'm is, is you. voting for Kim Jong Il and Anwar Al Awlaki. So I mean, there's some more truly global people who make it possible not just to share my baby photos with my mother-in-law. I I beg to differ. I think it's enough. We've the politicians have had enough press and enough attention. It's kind of always the default as a politician gets this. And I don't think politicians make as much of a difference in day-to-day lives as somebody like Mark Zuckerberg okay, What about Steve okay, Jobs? Think of all the people who got a, laid because of Facebook. Where... <laughs> well, I didn't hear that. Say you know, I, no, don't say it again. Leo, Leo, we're talking Time Magazine, not Playboy Magazine. <laughs> I think Mark has done more to bring people together, old college, <laughs> old college flames... High school girlfriends. Yes, I'm, I'm not saying that's year. not valuable, but I think we should also look at the the way this award has sort of been diluted anyway. Like two years ago, there was a big mirror and a picture, and it said you. Like we were all person of the year. So yeah. it's almost something, you know, I barely care about anymore at all. Yeah, remember, okay. Leo, remember when the personal computer was the person yeah. of the year? Yeah, I remember when you were the personal of the year? Because, yeah. You. You. All of us, you. That's what, yeah. You yeah, with the mirror, yeah, like Natalie said, totally. You. Oh, I, you. I think that you're making too much light of it. Call me an overly serious guy, but, but really, I mean, the the printing press can be used to print silly things, but that doesn't mean that it is a, a silly tool. Really? Well, not... what does oh, it yeah. do? Facebook I mean, is, I agree Facebook he's an important so guy, but what does it do? Like, can, can it. it, it... It makes people in supermarkets get excited and say, yeah, we really do appreciate this Facebook thing. Well, and that's right? the whole point of a cover of a magazine is to sell the magazine. Well, it certainly will do. That. Right? So yeah. they would pick a person of the year, not because that's the best, most interesting, or the person who's done the most for the human race. It's the person most likely to sell the most copies of the magazine at the supermarket. Right. I, it's not even crowdsourced. It's just what time thinks, what their editors think. Like, well, and, and, they and really I, want to do something like this, come up with a final list and throw it on their, sorry to say it, Facebook page. You know who I think the uh, person of the year should be? The old Spice guy. Man, I think he's great. <laughs> he's on a horse. That's the person. All right, you're right. That's, uh, that's, but truthfully... He who, would sell magazines. He would, I'm going to say that. He would that's sell a lot more like. grocery store copies... Of Time Magazine, if you put that guy. On oh, the front. Assange should be person of the year. Do you think so? Uh huh. I th- I yeah. think probably if you're talking about somebody who's not that merely won't sell magazines. Well, but, but not right. not merely um, not merely done important things, but in some ways really changed how we think of journalism. Uh, it's the you know as Jay Rosen said, the first transnational, first you know post national journalistic entity. I think that that you could make a case for Assange. Well, he's also brought us to the point of should uh, of really trying to think about should everything, and I mean everything, be transparent. Yeah. What is what? Yes. 
And, well, this is a great conversation. Let's have that in a second, because I think transparency is a kind of an interesting subject. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to talk a little bit about Gazelle. I know a lot of you are saddled with old gadgets you'd like to get rid of, maybe an old iPhone or two. Perhaps you'd like to get the new iPhone. Gazelle is a great place to get rid of your old gadgets. Don't sell it. Gazelle it. Gazelle.com is the place to go right now if you want to know more about Gazelle. You can buy and sell electronics. If you go to the website, uh, you'll be able to enter in your old gear. What is it? Give me a, Jim, give me a gadget, an old gadget that you have lying around an old uh, the house that you don't need anymore, you don't want anymore. Well, now my BlackBerry 9700. The no, perfect example. Good. No, no, let's say actually... you're, you're going to keep that N98. So you have N8, an old N8. N8, rather. So you have an old, uh, it's a curve, right? Yeah, just put a BlackBerry curve, sure. Let's see, the old curve <coughs> and uh, 8310. There's quite a few curves, aren't there? Let me look at all the different curves. See which one. The 8,000, the 5,000. Which one? It's this one, right? Yeah, it's that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the yeah, ticket. Yeah, that's the ticket. It is. So you can see they have all the different models in here. You click sell it now, and then it's going to ask you a few questions. Because it make a call? Yeah. For your water damage? No. Yeah. No? <laughs> really? Would you drop it in the toilet? The what ocean. happened? The ocean. I dropped in the ocean. All right, let's say it's good condition. You have the AC <laughs> adapted to research. I sure do. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. The By the way, this is fun. Look at the graph. They show you the value as it's been plummeting. <laughs> That's it. Whoops, I dropped it in the water. Yeah. Let's calculate how much you're going to get. $65. That's pretty cool. That's good. Now, so here's what happens. You, you say, okay, I'll accept that offer. You can, by the way, add more. Get a box. You check out. They will print, you print out a mailing label. They pay the postage. You send all that stuff back in a box. They send you a check. Or you can get a, a, a Amazon uh, credit or a PayPal credit. I think there are a variety of different ways you can get paid. It's just a great way to get rid of your gadgets. If it's so old and junky that they can't sell it, they'll tell you ahead of time. And then they'll recycle it. And they do it responsibly using EPA certified green recyclers. They guarantee no landfill, no international transportation. Uh, they break it down, and they take care of it uh, responsibly and appropriately. Now, here's one more feature that I like about Gazelle. If you're a nonprofit, instead of having a bake sale, have a gadget sale. Turn your gadgets into cash for your cause. They'll even give you a web page, a personalized gadget drive web page. You can send donors there. The donors send their gadgets to Gazelle. Gazelle sends your charity the check. Great way to raise money for all sorts of causes. Great recycling. Sell your gadgets. Gazelle, I love it. Don't sell it. Gazelle, it. use the offer code TWIT, by the way, at the end when you're checking out, and uh, you get a 5% bonus payment for your used gadgets. G-A-Z-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, Gazelle.com. Let's talk about transparency, because I think you're right. I think um, that's really what the WikiLeaks message is, is that uh, in the day of the Internet... There's no room for secrets, even for governmental secrets. You think that's the case? I think it's that, becoming that, that is way. what I think. I that's, mean, that's I, the message. Isn't but it? is it right or not? I mean, I think that's more interesting. Is should there should there be things that are better off left unknown about to everybody? You or about, well, certainly about me, but I mean, really about <laughs> the rest of the world. I could I, look. I could defend your right to have a private to have some private life. I think that that's fine. But do you, do you think governments? Uh, it, it it depends, and I, I can argue both sides of this, but I'll take. I the, can too, actually. I'll take I'll take the side of things should be private because you know many things happen in back rooms based on trust between leaders that they may not be able to say out loud, and if all of their thoughts are all out loud, that I think could slow things down or could cause problems. I could argue the. Other I think side that's a it. fundamental mistrust uh, of the people, and and really, I think uh, I'm not talking about the U.S., but other parts of the world. Well, uh, the U.S. is is whose <laughs> ox is being gored right now. Um, what there, do you think, Natalie? Certain, oh, go ahead, Marshall. Well, I wonder if there's a certain point where an organization loses enough trust that that their assurances that they're acting in secret in good faith uh, don't carry any water anymore. Um, 
you know, and I'm not sure that the WikiLeaks either is arguing completely against secrecy. I mean, they've gone through and redacted a bunch of names and details in partnership with the the media outlets that they're publishing alongside of. Um, but you know, I think about uh, about the revelation that the United States is looking for blackmail material to use against uh, people participating in climate change negotiations who want stricter controls uh, on on uh, climate. Change wow, that's United quite States a revelation. I didn't see that. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, and, and the list just keeps going on, but that's just, think about that one as uh, so that there's something tangible there. Right. Um, we have the right to know that, don't you think? I think so. Yeah. And I can see why government, our government would love to hide that. Yeah. The State Department cover up of uh, human sef sex trafficking by private military contractors in Afghanistan. Um, reported in uh, by the Houston Chronicle as a result of, of WikiLeaks. A lot of people linked to that uh, to that source that came out. I think that that deserves light of day. Wow! And there are I, I'd like to know some real tangible harms that have been done as a result of the disclosure. There's I think there's tangible examples of things that have been disclosed that needed to be disclosed. But in most cases, it feels like it's a philosophical argument on the other side. Uh, or in worst case scenario, uh, a case where the government says this is bad and and people go along with it just because they're told that it's a, a terrible thing to to have secrets disclosed. But I, I'd like to know some specific well, secrets that should not have been disclosed and what the the uh, the harm beyond just harm to to U.S. interests, but harm to to people's lives uh, has been as a result of that disclosure. Right. Yep. I, I think it's a lot of just sort of dirty laundry where, you know, the things that Hillary Clinton is asking her staff information about that, that kind of thing. It's embarrassing. Um, and I am definitely all for making the government more of an open source community where, you know, information is actually not private, but we can all discuss it. The problem is we don't live in that society. So if only one person has their laundry aired and other people don't, that's why we're so uncomfortable with it, I think. And I do feel like we we would feel a lot differently as a country if this were a Middle Eastern country who had their dirty laundry out. Oh, we'd be well, laughing. The, the, well, the other part of it I think that's interesting is WikiLeaks is now moving from government to business. And right. think about, you know, NDA statements that you've signed. I mean, I run a business. I wouldn't want everything that we're planning on doing to be completely transparent and open to everybody, and I'm just a small business where it probably doesn't even matter that much. Well, and th that's a good point. I mean, uh, but I think that's the difference between government and business. Uh, government, uh, you, you, I, I don't have a problem with you having secrets. I have a little bit of a problem with the government having secrets. So that, that is, there is a difference. But but there are secrets. I, I don't know. I, I was playing uh, Call of Duty um, Black Ops last night. Well, I'd keep that. Yeah, you know, the center. If I were that's you. that was not the secret I wanted oh, to reveal. Okay. <laughs> you know, the central character is this guy, and you know, the Cold War goes down to the Bay of Pigs and tries right. to you know does all this stuff. Tries to, you know, and at that time during the Cold War, were there secrets that we shouldn't have told? I don't know. Uh, I just think. The stuff that we were doing then, would we have been better off having everyone know it? Maybe we wouldn't have gone to the well, Vietnam War. Exactly. Maybe I'm, there was a lot maybe of reprehensible myself here. There's a lot of reprehensible stuff that uh, went on that uh, probably wouldn't have happened. Had we well, known. A lot, many wars are built on assumptions and propaganda, and I think this memo that Michael Michael Moore posted on the Huffington Post about why he posted bail for Julian Assange makes a great point that a lot of this information wouldn't have been so many. There wouldn't have been so many smoke and mirrors. And is that right? Or, or is there really weapons of mass destruction? Like we would have known. We would have had more information, which we can all agree on. I think is a good thing, at least that part. We certainly, the government has lost our trust. In the post-Watergate era, I don't think there's anybody who trusts government anymore. And uh, so I think in that, in that, ex, in that case, then uh, revealing the secrets of the government is only a good thing, right? If you don't trust them, you got to watch them. And how can you watch them if we don't know what's going on? I mean, so, so many news broadcasts are built on this, like, you know, we're telling you the truth. We dug it all up. We're, you know, and, and that's just, it's, they don't have any more information than the rest of us had. They just make it our business, their business to, you know, dissect more and read more and pay more attention. But if, if there really was more information out there, then maybe the news networks would have something to work with. Right. 
Well, in fact, maybe we don't need news networks, right? I mean, we've got this guy. <laughs> do we even have news networks anymore? I mean, really? <laughs> well, we oh, do. No, I, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're called the news networks. I don't know if they uh, they they take serious. They're not news networks in the Edward R. Murrow sense of a news network, are they? Well, we don't have no. networks in the Edward R. Murrow sense anymore. Well, that's now we true. have a, a zillion different. Anybody can be a broadcaster, right? Right. I wonder, though, and, and to, to take it to the next uh, level, I wonder if um, this Internet media stuff, if we can replace, you know, if we can still do news and, and investigative journalism. You and I both run uh, Internet networks. We don't have the resources to do the kind of thing that the old networks used to do. Yeah, but I think there's still... Neither do the old networks, yeah, let right. me tell you. <laughs> Somebody who works for a network... But, yeah. but Huffington Post is now putting a lot of money into... Fifteen million, I right, think, in an investigative, investigative journalism. Yeah. So... Does investigative journalism sell? I fear that that's a, a token amount of money that they're doing specifically to respond to this complaint. You think was, they're attracting attention to themselves? Uh, oh, really? <laughs> the Huffington Post? Well, I, I, I was talking to somebody whose friend uh, is a, a... I don't want to name names or give you enough information to make this person track downable. Former uh, investigative reporter for a major network who has taken a job doing investigative reporting for Rupert Murdoch's Daily, the 99-cent week iPad publication. is very excited about it. He actually turned down a, a real job with a major network to do this. And uh, maybe there is, you know, maybe uh, there's, with the paywall, there's a way to keep journalism alive, or, or is it hopeless? I, I certainly don't think we get a lot of journalism now. So I think you, what you have to ask yourselves to answer that question is, would you pay for this iPad app, this 99 cents a week or whatever right. it is. Would you? Would you? I wouldn't. Oh, you're not going to? Yeah, because the internet gives me everything. The web yeah, gives me everything. I gotta, I gotta, well, I gotta, well I gotta, it depends on the content that you want. I pay a lot of money for The Economist. That's true. Because, that's well worth it. Yeah, because it's worth it to me. And so, you know, if you're the kind of person who really appreciates News Corp reporting, then you, you'd pay for it. Are you saying something about me, Natalie? That, <laughs> you want to come right out and say it? No. <laughs> no. I get everything I need. Stop using my login free. to the Economist, Jim. <laughs> Gosh darn it! Why don't you fax me some of their articles? <laughs> so uh, I saw an interesting story relating to this. Uh, YouTube supposedly in talks to buy next new networks. Did you see that New York Times reporting that no, story? No, we, we, we didn't talk about that at all in the office. <laughs> <laughs> Revision three in the same kind of business as next new networks. Uh, although they're more of an aggregator than you are. Yeah, you know, they produce a bunch of their own shows. They do. They do. They do. Although, I, I think, and, and no, I don't really know anything about it. They are, you know, a competitive company. But um, I don't think that YouTube is going to get into the content creation game. That would be the speculation if they bought somebody like next new networks. I, if they wanted to get into the content creation game. I could see them with all of their money going out and buying Endemol or Fremantle, the guys who do, you know, who do... Buy so, the actual content. Yeah, buy the companies. But, well, buy a, someone who's got a bigger audience footprint. What if you could take Survivor and put Survivor on YouTube? Right. You'd have to buy the guy, Mark Well, Burnett, I would be willing to bet that YouTube is spending a lot of time, people from YouTube are spending a lot of time in Hollywood talking to Mark Burnett and all of these guys saying, let's do something that's web-based. Don't you think? I think they are only just beginning to do that because they hired uh, Robert Kinkle from Netflix. That's who right. Did all the deals with Netflix. That's right. Uh, to get to line up all the content from all the big uh, networks. I don't think they were doing much at all before because YouTube for a long time, um, right after Google bought them, they turned them from a media company into an algorithm company, into a technology company. And I believe um, that they are slowly turning back to thinking they might be more of a media company, but I still don't think that they are going to get into the business of creating their own content. Last month, Eric Schmidt was asked uh, if he'd consider ac acquiring web video companies, content creators. He says, you never say never. We tried not to cross that line, but to actually own the content is an important decision. He's acknowledging that would be a big step for Google. We're always debating these things says Schmidt. The good news right now is there's enough of these little digital studios that can raise capital. He's talking about you. He's talking about you, too, Leo. <laughs> and would they you, see Would YouTube you sell? Would you sell to, to Google? No, Google's not coming knocking at my door. I can I tell you that know. right now. He said, though, that they see YouTube as a viable distribution point. It's Eric Schmidt. <laughs> Hello, Eric. How are you? <laughs> um, and that's true. Certainly, you, you and I both do a video on YouTube. Yep. And I'm sure, Natalie, CBS puts everything that you do on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Indeed. I mean, why wouldn't you? Well, Viacom doesn't because they have that suit going <laughs> so on. so stupid. That's yeah. just stupid. 
That's just stupid. So, um, I, I think that YouTube doesn't need to buy this stuff. They, they already have the channel, the most powerful channel in the world. I don't even understand why they would go to Next New Networks. Maybe they'd make a deal with Next New Networks, a distribution deal, but why, why buy them? They don't need and to buy why them. buy just one vertical of video? Why, you know, why start there? Why not just make their own stuff? Why not start with news? Why not start with, I don't know. Some, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. They already send, you know, the number one Google video is the Bed Intruders song, which is a next, next new network's video. That's number one in 2010, the Gregory Brothers. But there are so many videos that get so much traffic. That may be the number one video, but as a percent of overall traffic on YouTube, it's got to be like a fly in the ointment. Yeah. 60 million views. I'll take it. It's that's nothing. That's, that's network nothing. numbers, dude. That's, that's nothing that's for Seinfeld YouTube. That's Seinfeld numbers. The number two video was, anybody, any guesses? Kesha. Yeah, it, you know. Actually, I didn't think it was Kesha. I thought it was uh, Justin Bieber. No, it was but Kesha. Well, Glitter puke. Oh. But the other interesting thing about views, views to me are less important than quality of audience. It actually wasn't Kesha. It was a par I, I apologize. It was a parody of Kesha. It was a parody of Kesha. There's no dollar sign. I should have known. It was a parody of Kesha from uh, another Next New Network show called The Key of Awesome. So they're they're uh, they're maybe they're maybe that's why this rumor started. Google said, "Hey, who's in charge here? Who's running this show? We'd like more of that." Go maybe, but they see. I mean, there's so many like the the little kid who did the Lady Gaga video. Like that kid was very talented, and now he's got a record right. label. Like he, Google's yeah. not sitting there saying who's talented, and we're going to pick no. them up and make them a star, or else they would have picked up that little kid and you know I'd leave like Britney to, alone. I'd rather be in YouTube's position and just be the place everybody goes to. On the other hand, uh, they got to monetize a lot of bandwidth. I can well, only imagine the amount of yeah, bandwidth. Yeah, but look, they have so much volume, and if you're going to go out and cherry pick content. You know, you're right, Natalie. Why not pick up Annoying Orange or Ray right. William Johnson or, right. you know, some of those folks? Because they're also, I mean, Ray William Johnson delivers more aggregate views probably. I mean, he, he is definitely up there. He's funny, uh, as is Annoying Orange. Annoying right. Orange is hilarious. And those are the people who are driving real sustainable views and have built sustainable channels. So if you're going to start buying some of them, I think you're right. Why not just buy a bunch of them? Yeah, I think this was Adam Curry's idea back when I used to work for him is that he would, you know, find everything that was cool on the Internet and curate it for you, which I think was a good idea. Um, it just <laughs> That's how really... Yahoo started. <laughs> and the right. Internet just got too big for him. Yeah, yeah exactly. You yeah. just can't do that. And people like the agency of finding it themselves. So I, I don't think that they want to serve it to you. They love the idea that you find it all yourself. Yeah. I want to see YouTube, <clears throat> to be a, a, a media organization, start hiring some political scientists and long-term foreign policy journalists to dig through the 250,000 WikiLeaks cables like the uh, New York Times and the Guardian has. Yeah, maybe that's, 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 what, media that's what you do is you support, you know, important journalistic endeavors. The reason the networks got in that business, it was always a loss leader for them, but it was prestigious. And, uh, and it gave them some gravitas to make up for uh, Uncle Milty. You know, and uh, and 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 it was a loss leader, but it was a good thing. They knew that that was their civic duty. I don't think yeah, YouTube I mean, needs to make up for cats does, riding does, skateboards. Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> Doesn't does Google have a civic duty? We don't have uh, you know the entertainment section of the newspaper to pay for the front page anymore. Yeah, that's the that's section. a problem. Now we need annoying orange to to uh, right. carry disproportionate weight and <laughs> subsidize the in serious investigative journalism on the web. Right. Annoying Orange subsidizes Annoying Assange. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about the uh, week's tech news with Jim Ladderback. He's the CEO of Revision 3. So Google calling you? Google calling us. Any, any, any knock on your door? We there? talk to Google all the time, but we haven't do talked. You? Yeah, we, of course we do. We're big we're I big don't talk YouTube. to him. What do you talk? Oh, we talk to him about, about how do I get YouTube? more views on my YouTube channel? Yeah. How do I make my channels work better? What do I do with annotations? <laughs> right. How do I do this? How do I do that? It's a very, I mean, it's very tactical. Yeah, I guess you sh I should be more tactical. I don't. I should be doing that. I don't do that. Well, you should talk In to, fact, talk all to all Colleen. I, Come all, on, Colleen. I, you got friends there. All now. I know is that every time I uh, I play a video from uh, a, a copyrighted source, they pull my video off of YouTube. <laughs> That's all I know. That's the algorithm coming out. I know. Jeez, jeez. Uh, let us talk a little bit about Audible.com, and that is a, a great sponsor. I know for uh, 
for us for the last what, five, four or five years. I'm a big Audible fan. I just was looking at my Audible catalog, over 400 books over the last 10 years. I joined Audible almost exactly 10 years ago, and I love it. I, I have the two-book-a-month account, and that's the one I want to set uh, you up with. They call it the Platinum Plan. That's for heavy-duty readers. You go to audible.com slash twit2, sign up for the Platinum Plan. Your first two books are free. You can cancel at any time, and the books are yours to keep for life. So if you have, uh, if you have uh, a couple of books you're interested in reading, but like me, you find it a little hard to find time to read, this is going to be a lifesaver for you. Whether it's Tom Clancy or Charles Dickens, James Patterson or Terry Pratchett, they've got it all. A great collection of over 80,000, I think, at the last count, uh, of books in all sorts of categories. Look, Baba Booey's got a book. Jeez, My wife Louise. bought it. Did she? Yes. She did? She loves Howard Stern. Really? Loves everything Howard. You know, Baba Booey actually, I think, narrates it. So that's the nice thing about Audible. You can yeah, hear it in his, own vo in his own voice. Uh, you know, he's a tech head. He's got his own sort of internet tech, tech show. He calls himself the Techno Beaver. Yeah, he yeah, reviews gadgets. Get my my wife said, "Oh yeah, you know, you should talk to him and bring him on to revision three. Oh, like, okay, mm, yeah, okay. Okay. Actually, Jeff Jarvis is a big fan too. So, uh, he he has my uh, my same agent, Gary Delabate. So <laughs> does he? Can oh. you uh, put him in touch with me, Natalie? Here's a great one, Pete. Yeah, I actually can. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if you want him on revision three, you, do you want him on revision three? Move over, Veronica. Yeah, <laughs> here, yeah. Comes, here, here comes Baba, Baba Bowie. <laughs> Here's a recommendation. I'm sure the audience would love that. This is one of my favorite <laughs> For me, science. Put Veronica in the beaver suit. <laughs> oh, I like that. So we, we, Natalie, saying, Mike, will you come and be in the beaver you're suit? You're saying when he does tech beaver, he wears a beaver suit? Yeah, he oh, does. Oh, jeez, Louise. <laughs> it's weird. I want to I want to plug a book here. Peter F. Hamilton. If you ever read any of his stuff, if you like sci-fi, you will love his stuff. Pandora Star. And its sequel, Judas Unchained, are now out on Audible, and you can get them free. I'm talking 37 hours and 22 minutes for Bandora's star. And I think Judas Unchained, yeah, it's 40 hours, even longer than 50. So we're talking right now free 70-plus hours of reading. If you've got a long commute, this is the best solution. Also, check it out at audible.com. The best of 2010, the editor's picks and customer favorites. These are the best audiobooks of the year. The hard part with Audible, just limiting yourself to two books a month, but that's what I'm going to make you do. Go to audible.com slash twit2. At least they're free. Pick your first two books. Listen, and I think you will find that uh, Audible is just a great way to read in our busy lives. Whenever you're in the car, at the gym, doing housework, uh, on your iPod, your iPhone, your Android phone, on your Kindle, pretty much any device, you can listen to great performances. And that's what's really key. These aren't some dry reader. These are performances. I, I want to hear, there's a new Terry Pratchett book. Terry Pratchett is the best, by the way. He's, He's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. I Shall Wear Midnight. Let's just, I just want to, Stephen Briggs reads this. I'm just going to play a little bit of this, just to give you a sense of, of the performance of the geological here. outcrop to themselves, even if this one was mostly covered in grass and the grass was mostly covered in sheep. And today, the sheep on the downs were left by themselves to do whatever it was that they did when they were by themselves, which would presumably be pretty much the same as they did if you were watching them. And the sheep usually fussed and herded and generally watched over. I have to tell you, well, Stephen Briggs reads a lot of these Terry Pratchett books. You can, almost all of them are on Audible, and boy, he's... I, I'm now... You know, that's the voice of Terry Pratchett to me in my yeah, head. I've read all the books, but I've never listened you to gotta them. You've got to listen to them. It's, it's an entirely different experience. And it's funny when you're driving along and chuckling. <laughs> People look over and go, uh, don't look now, but he's laughing. Audible.com slash twit2. Get your two free books. Please don't waste any time. Get them today. I'm sure you'll find a time to listen. 400 plus books now. I'm listening to um, Keith Richards' autobiography right now. I got to try that science fiction awesome. author. I've never. You've read, never read any Peter Fan? Oh, you would like because you like hard fiction and you like hard yeah, sci-fi. Totally. You like scientific. Yep. Yeah, yep. you you would love. Start with um, uh, Fallen Dragon. Okay, that's one volume because the other stuff is like three volumes. Yep. Fallen Dragon, awesome. Got it. Awesome. And by the way, a mech man is saying when sheep when humans aren't around, sheep play pool. So I didn't know that. Know <laughs> Who what, gave them the pool table? That's I what know. I want to know. I don't know. Uh, let's see what other stories are in the uh, news today. Checking the Google Docs. Yes, a Japanese woman so incensed by Google Street View showing her private items on the washing line. 
She's suing Google. <laughs> she says, I was overwhelmed with anxiety. Well, now remember, this is in Japan where the sale of, of underwear is, is very, you know, prolific. <laughs> You know, you know, you buy <laughs> prolific. They, they, you mean the underwear purchases per capita are far higher than far in other higher parts than any other of nation. The developed world. Absolutely, she says. I was overwhelmed with anxiety that I might be the target of a sex crime. It caused me to lose my job. I had to move. I had to move. Couldn't you make the argument that the people around her could already see those underwear and may have mm. still wanted to commit true. sex well, crimes against her? That's a good point. And, and if they're facing the street, anybody who walked by could see them or drove by could see them. Hmm. Right? She should move yeah. to Germany, then she'd just blur it out. <laughs> well, the move amazing some part for me uh, to this story uh, was that she was... She was suing and demanding a grand total of $7,000. <laughs> <laughs> what about the naked guy in the trunk? Why isn't he suing? <laughs> Maybe she should just sue for some new underwear and call it even. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm told now by somebody who's actually been to Japan that they do not, in fact, have <laughs> vending machines for panties. I thought they did. <laughs> it's an urban legend. <laughs> How does that person know that unilaterally? There may be There's some places somewhere there where is. they do. Yeah. The somewhere there for is. undergarments. Apple says we're going to open our Mac App Store January 6th. Prices will range from free to $15 for some of the Apple uh, iWork apps. Um, is this a complete change in the way we buy computing oh, software? What's, what's the difference between that and download.com? CNET site. Thank you. Uh, right, that's right. I think there's a difference from the point of view of the software publisher because basically you have to get Apple's approval to get in the store, but then you get publicized by Apple. Apple takes 30%, but they handle the whole transaction. They do all the downloading. All the bandwidth is theirs. So it is a smoother transaction. And I think if you're a software developer, your hope, could be fear, is that pretty soon that's how everybody's going to buy their software. So you have to be in it just as you have to be in it on the iPhone. No way. This is like, you know, Digital River is this company that does this online where they, you know, you can buy Symantec's Norton products. You can buy all this stuff. It, it, I can see where it makes sense in a closed environment with a new operating system. But this is like saying, I'm Intel and I'm going to build the app store for right. netbooks, which they tried to do, they by did. the way. Yep. And uh, I don't know anybody who uses it. It is basically a download. It's, it's two cows. It's download.com. So it's not a big deal. I don't think it is. And this just I, in, here's video of a panty vending machine <laughs> <laughs> in Japan. <laughs> okay. It looks kind of a travelogue. I don't know what uh, it's doing out in the woods or out of the fields. Video, I, I don't know. I, maybe, <laughs> the, maybe the vending machine is... is oh, 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 oh Zoom go. in, 24-hour panty vending machine. That's the <laughs> translation. All right, I'm sorry I brought it up. I apologize to everyone. Please accept. Well, wait a minute. No, there really is a. You know, you often need panties after working the field. Look at that. 3,000 yen. That's exactly how much that woman was asking for. Um, you could always just carry a diaper bag. How many of you show of hands? Yeah, really. Who's you, a new mommy? Yeah, Who's there a new you mommy? go. New mommy. I'm a new mom. So, anybody seen Tron yet? Tron Legacy? Anybody? Show of hands? No. No. No, you got, you got better things to do, Natalie. Marshall, we're yeah. counting on Mr. Neckbeard. Have you seen? No, nope. personal grooming uh, takes all my free time. And, uh, <laughs> have been unable to go and watch it. All right. So the reviews, right. I, the reviews are mixed. Some people say it's not a great movie, but the video effects, special effects are great. Apparently, you should see it on IMAX 3D. That's what everybody agrees. I don't know. We, we, uh, okay, I just. Sounds know. like our review is it is unmoving and and uh, insufficiently compelling to go and watch. Well, you know, one of the guys that we work with who's a uh, does a lot of comic book stuff went and did, went to the midnight show Thursday, came back, said it was the most amazing thing ever, and that everyone would love it. But this is the same guy. He said the same thing about Scott Pilgrim. Oh dear. Well, I don't trust him at all. Then. Well, for the comic book fans, absolutely, right. you should go right. see it. But is this a movie that's going to be at the same level of say Wally? Right. I doubt it. So, you know, I got those Gunner Tron inspired 3D glasses, and I think it's so funny that the movie studio, that glass manufacturers are now selling you 3D glasses that you'll just keep with you, your own personal ones, so you don't have to use the loaners. 
Yeah, because who wants, you know, I don't know if I want to watch somebody else's. Do they disinfect those in between showings? I think so. That's why they're wrapped in plastic, right? Oh, they're wrapped in plastic at your theater? Yeah, yeah, because they wrap them in plastic. Been... Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Sanitized for your protection. I believe that. <laughs> uh, they give them the plastic wrapping machine, but not the dishwashing sanitizing machine. Perhaps. I always bring a vat of acid to dip mine in before I put them on. Research from, researchers from Harvard have collaborated with Google to analyze the massive library of digitized books in the Google Books uh, collection. Why? Because they're trying to figure out the half-life of a celebrity, uh, <laughs> among other things. Starting uh, with books that come out in the year 1500, going all the way up to modern uh, books, about 1.4 billion words a year. Actually, uh, by 2000, it's 8 billion words a year. They performed a data analysis looking for what they called n-grams, short phrases of up to five words. The procedure allows them to d detect trends. In the U.S., the frequency of the word slavery, for instance, peaked during the Civil War. That's what you'd expect. But then had a resurgence during the Civil Rights Movement in the 60s. That's also kind of what you'd expect. Uh, you, they call it their culture roam, like a genome. It's a culture roam. And, uh, for instance, you could see here the, uh, the uh, popularity of various foods. Steak, sausage, ice cream, hamburger, pizza, pasta, and sushi. Ice cream peaking in 1950, going through a downtrend in 1960. But it's back on top in the year 2000, baby. So pizza you know, really taken off from 1950 on. So, you know, Marshall, this is what they're doing instead of funding investigative journalism. <laughs> yeah. So this is really cool, actually. I spent a lot of time with this. Uh, you know, carrots versus celery is a, is a fascinating one. Celery uh, thought it was pulling away into the lead, and carrot came right on back. Carrot Garlic. comes right on back, baby. This is like Garlic. one of those races at the ball game, this you know, is, yeah. in between the innings. You carrots can go to catching N up. Ngrams.googlelabs.com. So what, give us some uh, sample uh, searches. Here's okay. one for punk rock and rock and roll. Cocaine, heroin, marijuana, methamphetamine is an interesting one. Um, cocaine, cocaine marijuana. It's like a big leap in the heroin, 80s. Heroin. And I did one, uh, Aldous see. Huxley, Timothy Leary. Uh, Look at that. Uh, Look at that. Robert cocaine Campbell. cocaine just taking off in the 90s, but plummeting now. But it's in books. It's not on the web, right? It's right. Just this is books. Well, because books. So the it's web not started like, in 1980. Yeah, but the Google website site dot com does does this for in a I think more relevant way. The site guys. Yeah, but that's only relevant. in the last you know fifteen years that the web's been around. This is this goes back to eighteen hundred. Racism, classism, sexism, and homophobia is a fun one. Okay, I'm not going to type that in. That's <laughs> too many. It's, maybe it's a too, downer. I don't know. Too many but, letters. Uh, I mean, uh, hours of fun. Yeah, hours you're coming up with uh, all the ones that are depressing me. Well, give us one. Okay, here here unicorns. <laughs> And mermaids. I did Mer unicorns, mermaids, and angels. And mermaids. Angels. Do, yeah, angels. hobbits and um the unicorns more oh unicorns don't angels, angels have been coming down. The result. Yeah, they do skew the result, don't they? Angels yeah. are so powerful that yeah. they ruin it. But look at here's unicorns in uh, blue, mermaids in red. Mermaids really just taking off. How about rest. baseball, football, and hockey? I did that one. Yeah, and see look and and football still ahead. Yeah. Uh although baseball catching up. M Marshall, you're right. This is hours of fun. Yeah, uh, radio, television, newspapers, magazines, stuff like that. Radio took a big jump around World War II. Um, and Internet is still just a tiny blip at the very end of the, the graph when you compare it to other uh, mediums. Interesting. Is it as big? No, it's this is, that's the yellow one. It's the little one down here at the bottom. Oh, that's, yeah. That's very interesting. I think the Internet is, is uh, where it's at, but so, carrots and celery are still way bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did cats, dogs, and ferrets. Yeah, and, and uh, dogs are clearly the leader. Ferrets never really got off the ground. They had a little bump back in 1810. Here's celery versus broccoli. Wow, you really can, you really, it is hours of fun, Marshall. Ngrams.googlelabs.com. Thanks to you. know, just a search for groovy is a fun one. Like how, oh yeah, you could just do one word. You don't have to just do. Just one word, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Groovy has really gone through uh, peaks and valleys. <laughs> I did hobbits on. and wizards, and yeah. Uh, yeah, wizards went out through the test of time. 
Leo, I think we need to discuss a, a spinoff show on this theme yeah. this week in, in Engram. Well, we've been looking this week in Engram's twin. <laughs> we've been looking for a game show, and I think this could be the basis of a game show. Like you, you predict what the trends are, or something like. I did that. news, sports, and weather. Yeah. Yep. And it, news is still on top. But 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 sports, what's coming sports on? Sports is climbing sports up, is and weather on. is going down. Nobody cares about the weather. Books on the weather not as interesting now that we actually have modern weather forecasting. You do, you do have a, uh, you do have a point, Natalie, that it's, it's just books. So, I don't know. Maybe if you did newspapers, that would be a little bit more topic, better for topical subjects, yeah. and that kind of thing. Have you ever done a Google fight? Googlefight.com. Yeah, I love that'll that. will search the internet. Yeah, that's, that's a fun one too. I used to do it until I lost big time <laughs> to Justin <laughs> Bieber. Oh. No, there's a lot of people I lose to. Let's do, uh, let's do you and me. What do you say, kid? Uh, well, it depends. If you use my new name, then I'm not going to have that no, much. I won't, I won't. Is this name. it? Is this the site you recommend? Yeah. Google Fight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Natalie, I'll do Del Conte. You're still going to win. I will not do Dvorak no, and Laporte. Oh, good. All right. Let's let's. Over the years, Over the he's years, coming on strong. Fight. Big. Here they are. They're fighting it out. It's a left. It's a right. It's a right to the body. The winner is. Natalie Del Conte. Oh, I win. Look at that. Jesus crikey. All right, let's put uh, let's put somebody I can beat in there. John C. Devore. <laughs> <laughs> and they're fighting. For, I know this is such an old site, and I can't believe we're actually doing this. But what the hell? What it's the fun. hell? All right, and <laughs> bye bye, John. Bye bye. You win. <laughs> hey, let's do uh, iPhone versus Android. Oh, now we're making it a little more topical, aren't we? Uh -huh. But Android means a lot more than just the... Uh, well, what would you suggest? Well, Let's do Julian Assange and Ooh, Mark Zuckerberg. Okay, there you go. This is what Time Magazine should have done. There Zuckerberg, you go. Zuckerberg Assange. I don't think they cared about numbers. I think that was that was proven by well, the Well, no, we, we used to use this to do, um, to do our uh, magazine covers at PC Mag. Whoa! Assange, big winner of Mark Zuckerberg. Actually, we didn't do that, but we should have. You should have. Well, there you go. Windows versus Mac. Natalie Del Conte at CBS. She's loaded, man. Yes. What is the website for that? Uh, CNET.com slash loaded. And what do you talk about on CNET.com slash loaded? It's just your daily tech news wrap up. It's like daily little tiny mini twits. So it's about three minutes a day of what's new and what's going on. So you do that five days a week? I do. 15 yeah. minutes worth of news and it takes me three hours to do all of that. Well, you're so you know, much more keep efficient. Short, keep it tight. So much more efficient than I am. And Miles is is thriving. He's doing well. Yeah, he slept the whole twit, the whole time. Oh, what a sweet boy! I see the Christmas tree. That giant present is that for him or is that for you? It is actually. That's a. It's an exorciser, but don't tell him. <laughs> How old is he? <laughs> He's four and a half months. I think that uh, he the secret is safe. Yeah. Does he still believe in Santa? <laughs> oh, see, that's a big argument in my household is because I don't want to lie to him. And um, Oh, you're not one of those, <laughs> are you? You don't want to lie to him? What do you mean? I'm you don't... like, we can't lie to our child. And he's like, it's an important part of tradition. It's not so, a lie. I'm the Scrooge. But, it's not yeah, a lie. It's like saying the Giants are better than the Phillies. It's just, it's just a fact. Yeah, well, that's true. That's you call true. yourself the, the WikiLeaks of Christmas. There you go. <laughs> yeah. She's all for She's transparency. She's all for transparency. Don't let my kid on Wikipedia. He'll know. He'll know he's been lied to. You know what my wife says? She says, well, you get to choose whether you believe in Santa or not. But if you believe in him, you get presents. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Last year on Loaded, I said something about, like, you know how Google the NORAD Santa tracker? Yeah, I love that. Could, yeah. Um, I said I covered it on Loaded, and I was like, that is, if you believe in Santa, which, of course, we all know, you know, I said something like that, and so many people were like, I watched that with my kids. You yeah, what's wrong idiot. with you? <laughs> what's wrong with you? you it for I Santa I is real, and we can tell because NORAD, look it, with the federal government spend millions of dollars tracking Santa if he weren't real? How do you, you know they spend point. millions of dollars, by the way? <laughs> Billions, probably. Did you read that on WikiLeaks? What? Yes. The Santa tracker? Santa tracker's real. It said it on WikiLeaks. <laughs> Jim Ladderback, CEO of Revision 3. What's your newest show? Give me a plug. Uh, newest show that, um, let's see, 
We uh, just launched um, Death Battle, which is the <laughs> <laughs> no, actually it's great. It's it was a, only a matter of time. It's a it's a battle. We're doing it with the guys at Screw Attack, and it is a battle between uh, two video game characters. Uh, oh. The first one being Seamus from Metroid. And um, wait, I got to remember the other one. That sounds pretty cool. It, it is kind of fun. Uh, we've I mean, got. It a, doesn't sound like it has a long life, though. I mean, do they battle every time? It does, it's it's just, it's just fun. I mean, how, I mean, how many how many episodes can you do? Is it how many? You can do lots. Well, different. Is it different people it's different each time? Different people each time. Oh, I was going to so say, if it's always the same two people, that wouldn't be very right. Exactly. So, I get it. So it's two different. It, oh, it was. It's it's uh, Seamus versus Boba Fett. Huh. Wouldn't you always like to see those guys yeah, who, who would win? smack each other down? Who would win in a death well, battle? you have to watch the show. There you go, death battle. To find out. Revision3.com slash death battle. Yeah. And I will say one thing for you, Natalie. You know, it's there are a lot of big events coming up in your child's life. Uh, first time they walk, first time they say mama. Yeah. My son's 11, just had a major event this oh. week, actually yesterday. What? What did Sam, he, what happened he, to Sam? He posted his first YouTube video. Oh, wow. Oh. And what is it about? You must be so proud. I, I actually was really proud. It was great. Uh, it's, um, it's about uh, a, a particular, um, particular glitch on Halo Reach. Wow. Yeah, How he really cute is, is that? Geek. Yeah, is that <laughs> cool? Wow. So lots of, lots of big moments coming up in your child's life. One of them will be when you, they post on YouTube and given, you know, probably without your permission. But when they do it. It'll happen. It'll Eleven be great. years well, Miles old. is on YouTube, but all of his videos are unlisted. Right. <laughs> <laughs> his his rolling over, which he does expertly now. If David after dentist, if that guy had figured out how to do it unlisted, he'd be out a lot of money now. You should post it post it in public. Post it in public. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know what? They're going to do it anyway. Yeah. My feeling is they're going to do it anyway. They might as well do it with you. I was thinking about that today because my kids are now grown. Abby's back from college, and Henry's you know is off at a ski thing. He's sixteen. And I realized that the best, I wish I had, I'm going to give you this advice, Natalie. And I wish I had, I had known this when I was, you know, at your stage in life. Just act like every day is the last time you're going to see him. Because eventually it's true. <laughs> I know. I loved your comment when I when I tweeted, someone's too cool to wear the baby Bjorn. And you wrote back on Google Buzz, tell him to wear it because I would still wear my kids if I, I could. I would. It's and it so doesn't cute. last. You cannot wear that thing. It's not going to last long. It's over. I still have, you know, it's on my credit card. I was wearing a baby Bjorn when I um, posed for the Bank of America. And uh, some on some of them, they've been using the same picture now for 16 years. But on some of them, you can just see the top of Henry's head. Yeah, I, remember oh. when, oh. I remember when you had that baby. Lady. Yeah, I know. I They're that. all grown They're now. All grown. It's, so enjoy it, Natalie, as if, you know, you don't know it's how long it's going to last. On the other hand, it'll be over before uh, too long. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank I goodness. Or the thing is, they'll all start coming back to live at home yeah, after they graduate maybe, from maybe. college. So, Marshall Kilpatrick, someday you will mate and have children. <laughs> we assume. It's possible. My, just, I don't know how my wife feels about that. I'm just teasing I, you. <laughs> I'll ask. Uh, it's really great to talk to you. Thank you, Marshall, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Marshall is at readwriteweb.com. Any plugs you'd like to put out? Oh, it's a 24-hour nerdathon over at Read Write Web, and we invite you to come and, and contribute your, your nerdly habits. Uh, plus, don't forget, speaking of WikiLeaks, go check out Glenn Greenwald's coverage on Salon of Bradley Manning, the young guy. Oh, the that private, private Manning. The leaks, yeah. Really not what you would expect oh interesting uh, really good coverage very explicitly dissident stuff on his part you know he he, he wasn't uh wasn't a vandal when he released that he knew what he was doing in other words he was mm -hmm. this was he was political yep very interesting by a lot, a lot been of the, been in the can for six months now in solitary wow no wow. conviction but is there a trial going on what's gonna what's what's the status Oh, I think he's awaiting trial still. Okay, okay. Very interesting. Yeah, it really is. Marshall and Greenwald's doing great. Thanks very much for having me on, Leo. I really appreciate so it. So great. We'll have you back very soon. Very soon. Thank you all for being here. Uh, a couple of reminders. First of all, uh, this is the last twit of uh, 2010. We're going to do a uh, best of next week. And all of you voted for your best clips from the past year. Some very good stuff in the best of. Uh, also, Christmas Eve, we'll release our holiday special. Featuring uh, Jonathan Hodgman, John Hodgman, Jonathan Colton, 
and uh, Sam and Dave. No, I'm sorry, Paul and Storm. We couldn't get Sam and Dave. So we got Paul and Storm. That, that's coming out on Christmas Eve. And uh, uh, Tom Merritt and I uh, hosted, and uh, there were several bottles of Jaeger consumed wow. during the making of that. So that was a lot of fun. Wow, is right. Jaegermeister. Jaeger. That's no. a blast from the past. We, yeah, well, Storm was drinking it, and we and so we ran out and got some of our own. To so do a Jaeger luge? Yeah. <laughs> our coverage of CES starts January 5th. We're taking a whole team out there, Tom Merritt, uh, Sarah Lane, uh, and uh, Brian Brushwood, as well as uh, myself, will be out there covering CES wall-to-wall. -wall. So if you can't get to the Consumer Electronics Show, our coverage starts January 5th. We have... Uh, Big booth there and all set up. We've got two live views to a stream. And uh, I think the Daily Gizwiz will be there. A lot of our, our hosts will be out there, as a matter of fact. So that should be a lot of fun starting January 5th at live.twit.tv. It's, yes, yeah, that time again. Hard to believe the Consumer Electronics Show is back. Are you going to get to skip it this year? Oh, no, I'm going. Yeah. I'm out Wednesday to Saturday. Come by. I will. We'll Love be doing to. Twit on a Saturday afternoon. Please come on. Love to. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. We'll see you next time. Another Twit. This and we'll see you next year. Amazing. Another Twit <laughs> is in the can about it you know like oh people will know me as this name but you know if people are following your career how easy is it to just say right. that's not her name anymore a name is easy to remember i don't you think know. it's such a big deal but, but natalie how come natalie morris.com resolves to natalie del conti dot squarespace .com? <laughs> yeah because i just yeah. forwarded it over <laughs> the, 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 the internet me. has a long memory that's right <laughs>